let's try and race through as much as we can here. Um, I'd love to talk about same-sex marriage and free speech with you, uh, Senator, but we've done a bit of that already. So let's talk about here... A, uh, at Sydney University, there is going to be a forum. It's going to be a forum uh, which will have, among others, the bloke from Uzbek Turiya, who, uh, well, has previously been invited to talk about honour killings uh, at the Sydney Opera House. He's a bloke who previously has said things like this. Do you want to kill ex-Muslims? In Islam, it's clear that apostates uh, do attract capital punishment, and we don't shy away from that. And that, in part, is causing concern for some of the other apparent speakers and an atheist who's also going to be there. So, Senator Lionhelm, a couple of free speech issues or issues here in general. Um, how do you feel about uh, someone like uh, the Uzbek Taria bloke turning up at an Australian university for a forum? Well, I, you know, obviously I don't like it. Uh, no normal person would like that sort of thing. The question is, what should you do about it, of course? Um, now, um, there's... Um, there's been consideration of uh, declaring Hizbut Tahrir a prohibited organisation for, uh, well, two or three years. I'm pretty sure Tony Abbott wanted to do it. And um, um, the, the, so the question is, does that help? To be a, a prohibited organisation, they have to be uh, advocating violence and, and nasty things that are not just nasty sounding. Um, and that's the, that's the barrier they have to cross over. It has to go from not, not um, it's more than uh, more than just saying things we don't want to hear and you're being totally obnoxious, which he obviously is. It's got to be in the, in the realms of incitement or calling for somebody to be killed or harm to somebody. Yeah, Nicholas Reese, uh, you know, if there was a religion conversation happening at Melbourne University, surely there are better examples of the Islamic faith than this bloke. Yeah, I mean, so, look, universities pride themselves on being platforms for debate, and so there's always going to be uh, a bias towards letting someone come and speak. I, I reckon this guy's right on the border, uh, and that's probably why we're debating it. Um, you know, if somebody is actually trying border. to incite people to uh, acts of violence against others, I think they cross the line. Um, um, uh, I think this guy's right up against that. Has he crossed it? I think it's debatable. Uh, but, of course, Shari, uh, you know, a university is such an open place for debate, unless, of course, you want to discuss climate change, uh, you're a conservative, or you want to stand up for Israel. And then, of course, exactly. you'll be screamed off or you want to get an honorary doctorate and your name's Howard. They throw blood at you. Exactly, and Sydney University is one of the worst places for it. You know, there was a very esteemed general who uh, came to speak at the University of Sydney and he'd, you know, led uh, armies in Afghanistan and uh, a group led by some of the anti-Semitic forces at the University of Sydney, the professors, uh, stormed, actually with his but Taria people as part of their protest, uh, stormed him off the stage and there was, you know, a lot of aggression shown. So this is very irresponsible of the University of Sydney. Uh, when Uthman Badar, the his but Taria spokesman, was going to go speak about honour killings at the a festival of dangerous ideas at the Opera House. That was eventually cancelled and he did not speak there anymore. And yet the University of Sydney is allowing him to speak to an audience of young, impressionable minds. Mm. The, only, the only small thing is I think it's better that these views are in the public domain in the sense that we know, you know, the most dangerous individuals are the extremists who we, we don't know about and we don't know that they have these views. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, at least we know that this man has is holding some very extreme, dangerous views. But also, I mean, Peter, my, my, my thing is, I wish that Australian universities were places where even the people on the fringes or even slightly on the wrong side of the fringes, I think this bloke's way over the line, but still, um, that those people were able to turn up without being physically jostled, without being stopped. Mm. But we know that there are certain people who could be defined in exactly the same way on a series of other issues who are just not even invited. So I have no issue with free speech and we've just had this whole debate about same-sex marriage and campaigning for the yes and the no. You can't have it both ways. If I think that the fines are wrong and that we should be strong enough to have a debate in this country without these new temporary laws, then I also think it's right and proper that you have uncomfortable, difficult subjects discussed publicly. I think that is what freedom of speech is. It doesn't become something you get to pick and choose your level of free speech. However, 
Uh, this guy incites violence. There is no doubt about that. There is not, not enough of a case yet, I think, Senator Lionhelm, to meet the test of prescribed organisation. I do think sometimes ASIO like to keep this organisation out there in the public domain so that they, they can watch them more closely than if they went underground. The issue I have, though, on a university campus is most of the recruitment for young men, jihadist young men, happen from people that have come in and around organisations like this that recruited very quickly between uh, being moderately radical to being uh, jihadist type, terrorist types picked up by the police locked up. So it doesn't take much to tip them over the edge. I don't think this is sound and proper. Uh, they're banned in the Netherlands, they're banned in Germany, they're banned in a lot of Muslim countries. And I think it's about time. I've always had this view that Hizbut Tahrir has no place in the Australian community. I don't resolve from that view. I still have that view and I think that he has no place on a campus that's supposed to teach enlightened minds. Well, Senator, if a bill came before the parliament to ban an organisation like Uzbekistan. You don't Australia. need a bill. It's for the foreign minister and the minister's yeah. Okay, but what, what, what would you think about it as an idea, as, as a libertarian, the idea of shutting down this organisation? Uh, only if there is evidence that they are inciting violence. Um, that, that's the borderline. That, that's the, if they cross that barrier, then fine, no problem. But just saying things that are totally obnoxious, uh, that we, we really would wish nobody would say, um, I'm, I'm pretty much the same as Shari. They're better out in the open. We can deal with them. Um, if we think that they might stray over the border and into violence, then at least we know who they are and what they've said, so we can keep an eye on them. All right, I don't really want to... Um, I don't really want people to think those thoughts and, and be suppressed from saying those thoughts because they, they, their attitudes won't change anything.